What's going on guys? Welcome to my presentation on liver disorders. Today we're going to discuss the primary functions of the liver and four main disorders. We're going to talk about hepatitis A, B, and C, as well as cirrhosis. So the liver functions to metabolize things such as glucose in which excessive amounts of glucose are stored as glycogen. And the body uses this stored glycogen as glucose when we need it. Also protein is metabolized in the liver and a byproduct of protein breakdown is ammonia. Now ammonia will convert to urea and if there's any liver abnormalities, a buildup of ammonia can cause cognitive declines. So we're gonna wanna give lactulose to get rid of excess ammonia in the body, okay guys? Now the liver also produces substances within the body such as albumin, which is our transport protein that helps maintain oncotic pressure, which helps keep fluid within vessels. A decreased level means that water is seeping out of the capillaries, which will cause edema and ascites. Ascites is that buildup of fluid within the abdominal cavity, and it can compress the lungs causing shortness of breath. Also fibrinogen is produced by our liver, and that is our clotting factor, guys. Lastly, bile is also produced and it serves to break down fats and it is stored in the gallbladder. Also to make note of bilirubin, which comes from the breakdown of erythrocytes, this is excreted within bile. If any liver abnormalities occur and bilirubin is not excreted out of the body, this will result in jaundice as well as clay colored stool and dark urine. Now the liver is also vital for detoxification of various substances such as medications like Tylenol, which can cause liver toxicity, okay guys? Also alcohol is detoxified as well as estrogen. Now say there is liver damage or an abnormality occurs, if the liver is unable to detoxify estrogen in males, something called gynecomastia may be seen, which is the enlargement of breast tissue. Also spider angioma may be seen, which is spider veins guys, those small veins that may be manifested on the skin. Another function the liver serves to provide is that of storage, and it stores our vitamins such as our B vitamins and fat soluble vitamins, which are vitamins A, D, E, and K, ADEC. Also, as mentioned earlier, the liver stores glucose as glycogen, as well as iron and bilirubin, guys. So again, the disorders we're going to discuss are hepatitis A, B, C, and cirrhosis. We're going to talk about hepatitis before we get into each one individually to get a basic understanding of what hepatitis is. For starters, hepatitis refers to the inflammation of the liver. Now, there are various diagnostics to look at before diagnosing hepatitis, but here are four looked at to see if there's any hepatic deficiencies. Now, AST, which stands for aspirate aminotransferase, and ALT, which stands for alanine transaminase, these are liver enzymes that detect if there's liver damage or not, okay, guys? So an increased level of them will indicate there is damage, and if there is damage, these enzymes will be released into the bloodstream. Now, a low serum albumin level may be an indicator for liver damage, as well as malnutrition, and an increase in bilirubin will mean that it is not being excreted within stool, Therefore, things such as jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin and sclera of the eye will occur, as well as clay colored stools will be manifested, guys. Now, the clinical manifestations seen when discussing hepatitis are going to be things such as anorexia, which is weight loss due to the decreased appetite that the person has. Also, nausea and vomiting and both arthralgia and myalgia, which is joint and muscle pain may be manifested. Moreover, abdominal pain will be present, especially in the upper right quadrant area because that is where the liver is located, upper right abdominal quadrant. Again, jaundice will be seen and patients exhibit this jaundice due to inflammation of the liver, which in turn will increase bilirubin concentration within the blood and because it's not being excreted from the body, guys. This will also cause stools to be clay in color because bilirubin is what gives stool its brown appearance. Again, guys, we're going to see those liver enzymes elevated, both AST and ALT, as well as bilirubin in the body. Lastly, albumin will be decreased, and if there's no albumin, then fluid will seep out of capillaries into the surrounding tissue, causing that edema and ascites. Remember, ascites is the fluid buildup within the abdominal cavity. To the right, there is a picture depicted with normal skin, and on the right, there is jaundice skin, guys. You can see the yellowing of the skin. You can see the yellowing of the eyes and that is because of the elevated bilirubin within the blood. Now the management for hepatitis, starting with the surgical approach, is that of a liver transplant. And remember guys, when doing any transplant, besides doing a cross match, we're also going to want to give immunosuppressive meds. A complication faced during liver transplantation would be organ rejection, so we're going to want to give immunosuppressive meds to suppress an immune response, and immunosuppressive medications such as tacrolimus and cyclosporin are examples. Interventions focused on when managing individuals with 
with hepatitis is going to be to provide small frequent meals. Remember, hepatitis patients lack appetite, anorexia. This in turn will cause nutritional deficiencies, slash that malnutrition and further weight loss. So providing small meals will help with this imbalance, guys. Moreover, we're going to want to decrease fat within the diet because if the liver is malfunctioning, bile won't be excreted to aid in emulsifying fats, leading to further complications such as steatorrhea, which is excretion of fat within stool. We're gonna wanna encourage rest as well as provide that education, guys. Education is always vital. In this case, we're gonna wanna educate them on foods to avoid and lifestyle habits to adjust. Perhaps too much alcohol is being consumed or the individual is being exposed to substances they can prevent exposure exposure from. Lastly, assessments as needed is going to be important as well to monitor for therapeutic progress as well as complications that may occur. So we're going to want to look at the liver enzymes values as well as bilirubin to see if they are returning to their normal ranges. Also assessing the color of the skin is going to be important to see if bilirubin is decreasing in circulation and daily weights will be done to see if there's any, you know, weight gain or weight loss. Now we're going to discuss the individual types of hepatitis, starting with A, okay? Now note, there are other types of hepatitis out there, but in this video, we're going to mainly focus on A, B, and C. Now the sources of Hep A stem from the fecal oral route, as well as food and water. Hep A is an acute disorder and symptoms become present about 15 to 50 days. So treatment options for Hep A are things such as immunoglobulin therapy and vaccination. There is a Hep A vaccination, okay guys? Also, supportive care is going to be implemented to help manage the disorder. Now we get to Hep B. So the sources of Hep B stem from bodily fluids, blood exposure, IV drugs, and sexual intercourse, which all alludes to that of bodily fluids, okay? Now Hep B is chronic, and symptoms appear 45 to 60 days after exposure, and treatment are things such as interferon therapy and immunoglobulin therapy. There's also a vaccine available for Hep B, guys, and vaccination is going to be very important when educating clients. And lastly, we get to our Hep C. And Hepatitis C sources stem from IV exposure and bodily fluids, but also from a virus. It is a chronic infection and these symptoms will appear two weeks to 25 weeks later. So treatment is going to start with antiviral and interferon therapy. Now there is no vaccination for Hepatitis C. Unlike Hep A and Hep B, there is a vaccination, guys. So Hep C, there is no vaccination, okay? Also, we're going to want to prevent the post exposure. And we get to our last disorder in this video, which is cirrhosis. And cirrhosis is a liver disease manifested as scarred tissue okay here is an image depicting a healthy liver and a liver affected by cirrhosis now causes of this disorder stem from viral infection excess alcohol consumption a buildup of fat within the liver or simply due to a genetic inheritance of the disease or an autoimmune acquirement guys manifestations seen are going to relate to interrupted liver function we're going to see jaundice ascites and edema due to the hypervolemia guys Remember, the fluid is leaking out, causing edema. What accompanies this fluid volume overload is bloating, shortness of breath due to that ascites. The fluid is suppressing the lungs, furthermore causing that increased abdominal girth. Now, splenomegaly will be seen as well, which is an enlarged spleen, and a complication known as portal hypertension and hepatic encephalopathy may be seen as well. There's definitely going to be an increase in our liver enzymes. Both our AST and ALT levels are going to be high. We're going to see thrombocytopenia and prolonged PT timing. Thrombocytopenia is a decreased platelet count, and platelets serve to clot blood. But if the spleen is enlarged, this clotting will take longer to occur, okay? Also, remember the liver produces fibrinogen and our clotting factors. If it's affected, we won't clot properly. Also, elevated serum ammonia levels are going to be high. And this elevation of ammonia is going to cause that change in consciousness. Remember, we have too much ammonia. Therefore, it will cause mental defects. And again, lactulose will be given to help excrete the buildup of ammonia, guys. Now, here's a close-up on those complications discussed in the manifestations, portal hypertension and hepatic encephalopathy. Now, portal hypertension occurs due to the portal vein constricting or narrowing, okay? Now, this vein helps carry blood from various organs in the abdominal cavity to the liver, such as the spleen. Therefore, if it becomes narrowed, blood will be constricted and blood will get backed up, furthermore causing one of those manifestations discussed. Splenomegaly, guys. Now, the spleen is important for storing platelets, storing iron, and filtering blood, as well as assisting in fighting infection, or better yet, releasing white blood cells to fight infection. Now, if the spleen is enlarged, all of these functions will be suppressed, leading to thrombocytopenia and neutropenia, therefore making someone at risk for infection, as well as bleeding. Now, esophageal varices occurs due to the decreased blood flow to the liver, 
and this increased or pooled blood within the portal vein will result in a high pressure within the vein, furthermore potentially causing vessel weakening and possible rupture of the vessel, which is a medical emergency and due to the fact thrombocytopenia is in play, there will not be proper clotting guys. Now in the image you see melina, which refers to dark stool, which is due to the fact blood is within the stool, either by that of hemorrhoids or internal bleeding, as well as coagulopathy, which refers to excessive bleeding due to deficient coagulation. And this again, guys, is due to thrombocytopenia, okay? Also, fetter hepaticus may be manifested in portal hypertension, and this describes the smell of the breath, which for better terms is going to be very, very, very unpleasant, okay? Can't emphasize that very enough now hepatic encephalopathy is caused by increased ammonia and toxins that are not detoxified and excreted by the liver okay so this is hepatic encephalopathy this increase will cause mental alterations such as confusion possible comas and can even lead to something called asterixis which is tremors of the hands when extending the wrist okay now diagnosis of cirrhosis oh that rhymes now this can be from things such as cat scan something called egd also termed esophagogastroduodenoscopy which is just a scope that looks through the esophagus to the stomach to the duodenum guys also a percutaneous transhepatic portal angiography can be used and this refers to the portal vein guys lastly a liver biopsy can be done and biopsies are key interventions that serve to examine bodily tissues. In this case, a piece of the liver will be cut off and examined, and liver biopsies or biopsies in general are optimal when trying to identify something, okay guys? And that does it for liver disorders, guys. Thank you for tuning in. After watching this video, no, you do not have to decrease your alcohol consumption or dietary preferences, but please be mindful of complications that can occur. It is July 4th weekend. Um, some of us are not celebrating for obvious reasons going around the world. But if you guys choose to get lit, please be mindful of your litness, okay? Anyway, you can follow up this video with my pancreatic disorder presentation. Like, subscribe, leave a comment if this video is helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.